Good evening, everyone. When I began to reflect on what I'm going to say tonight here, I realized that suffering is one of the most difficult subjects to understand. As a matter of fact, uh, this is one of the subjects that makes many people question existence of God and relevance of religion. If you talk with people, they say, if God is merciful, if God is loving, if, if God is kind, why then he allows so much suffering in this world? And uh, also they say, how could you believe in a religion that believes in hell and punishment and, uh, and all kind of really awful things that religious leaders have done in the world and uh, believers do in the name of religion and in the name of God. And usually people don't have much answer, really convincing answer to this kind of uh, statement. So I thought that is a good idea to reflect to see what is the Baha'i perspective on suffering. And in order to do that, I went to look at some of the writings of the Baha'i faith. And I found one that was really puzzling. Okay. And uh, the one is uh, uh, one uh, uh, in one of the books of Baha'u'llah called The Hidden Words. Hidden Words is a very small book. It has two parts. Uh, one part that was in the original language in Persian and the other one in Arabic. And it has a number of a very small statements. And the reason that it is called the hidden books, uh, hidden words, is because in the story of Islam, in the history of Islam, there is a very prominent women figure, Fatima. Fatima was mother of Imam Hussein. And Imam Hussein is considered as the most prominent, the most outstanding, the most mysterious uh, martyr in this in Islam. And when he was martyred, Fatima was in a state of grief. And these words, these hidden words, were recited to her spirit and brought her joy. And because nobody knew what they were, they were called hidden. Baha'u'llah says these are those words that were revealed, given to Fatima to decrease her suffering. Okay. <coughs> also, Baha'u'llah says that this small book, The Hidden Woods, is the essence of all the spiritual teachings of all religions until the Baha'i faith. That's the essence of it. So, 
when you read the hidden words, you come across this very powerful and uh, pregnant, if you wish, statements. And here the one that I'm going to read for you relates is directly about the issue of suffering. He says, O son of man, and when you read the hidden words, you will see many of them starts, O son of man. O son of man means O humanity, all humanity. Man, woman, everybody. It's just reference to us. We have been created and we have a history and here we are. O son of man, my calamity, God's calamity, my calamity, is my providence. Outwardly, it is fire and vengeance, but inwardly, it is light and mercy. Hasten there and to that thou mayest become an eternal light and an immortal spirit. This is my command unto thee. Do thou observe it. In the original Arabic, is a very interesting because uh, he says, Balai enayati. Okay. Bala is calamity. Enayat is providence. Providence means God's care, love, and guidance. That's what it means. So here Baha'u'llah says, God's calamity is expression of his mercy and his care and his love. Okay? And he says, outwardly, it is vengeance. Vengeance means uh, punishment. Uh, punishment and retaliation and pain. Okay? Outwardly comes as a, looks at as a punishment. But inwardly it is light and mercy. And then he says something very, very mysterious. He says, hasten there unto, meaning don't run away from the calamities of life. Don't run away. Don't get drunk. Don't busy yourself with other things so that you wouldn't feel the pain of life. Face it. Go towards it. And if you do, then you become an eternal light. Now, isn't that interesting? For us, becoming eternal light and immortal Spirit. Now, this is a very difficult issue, you know, how we are going to understand this concept, you know. How do we become in eternal light and immortal spirit to suffering? And how should we re- approach to suffering? What should be our approach to suffering? How should we hasten towards suffering? Okay, so these are the reflections that I began to have about this. And I feel that in order for us to understand it, one of the first things that we should do is to think about human reality. Human reality, our reality, is the most complex expression of the law of unity that we can we know about. It is unity of body and soul, 
of of mind and matter, of physical and spiritual, is a, a unity of the physical and the spiritual, or mind and, and matter. And when this unity takes place, at the moment of conception onward, then our reality, our selfhood, is a created. We become a self, become a person. Okay? We have an identity now. And when this unity breaks up, in other words, when the soul leaves the body, then the soul goes this way and the body goes this way. And no longer we have that expression of beingness in this life. So we embark on another journey. Okay? So we have to, in order to understand the impact of suffering on human mind and human reality, we have to understand the issue of uh, of what really is a uh, human reality, okay? And in human reality, this is the combination of the two. And they are never separated from each other. In other words, you cannot separate mind from body and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, many people tend to have a dichotomous perspective of life. Dichotomous perspective means that people think that we have two realities. One is a physical reality and one is a spiritual reality. And they say, well, I'm going to forget about physical and focus on the spiritual. You can't. Because unity needs the two together. The physical and the spiritual are together. As long as we are in this life and we are alive, the body and the soul, the mind and the body, the physical and the spiritual are together. They cannot be separated. And this is very, very important to remember. Okay. Okay. So, when human suffering happens, therefore, it ha- affects both the spiritual and the physical dimensions of our being. Now, when we reflect on the suffering and we want to understand how it affects the different aspects of our life for the sake of making issues a little bit more clear, we have to see what are different expressions or different aspects of human reality? And, and in doing so, we can identify at least four aspects of our being. One is our physical. The other one is psychological, our emotions and thoughts. The other one is social, our relationships. And the other one is spiritual, moral, ethical, spiritual issue. And in every, in this area, every category has its own unique types of suffering. Okay? Every unique types of suffering. For example, physical, which relates to our body. Okay? Uh, one of the most important uh, physical suffering that we all experience is pain, right? Pain uh, afflicts everybody. And pain is more powerful than most powerful. Okay? Doesn't matter how powerful you are you are going to be defeated by pain. 
Okay. Now, somebody can say, well, well, why we have pain? Yeah, pain is one of the greatest gifts that we have. Because pain is, first of all, is a signal that something is wrong. If you didn't have that signal, you don't do anything. When you have pain, immediately the question is, what is wrong? You know, one of the most serious diseases in a symbolic terms is leprosy. That's the reason that in religions, you know, for example, in Christianity, they say that Christ, you know, healed the leper. Okay. What is leprosy? What is the manifestation of leprosy? Manifestation of leprosy is that the person doesn't feel pain. And because the person doesn't feel pain, then they touch everything, they burn themselves, they cut themselves, they become deformed through the process of not having pain. You see? Pain, that's, therefore, people who don't experience pain, psychological pain, moral pain, they are spiritual lepers. These are in psychological terms, they are psychopath. They say psychopath person is a person who doesn't feel suffering of other people. Okay? And because he doesn't feel suffering of other people, he inflicts suffering on people. Okay? It inflicts suffering. makes people to suffer. Most of the really awful murderers in human history, you will see that their personality makeup is, is that they don't have sensitivity to suffering and to pain of people. So in a physical sense, one of the sufferings that all of us experience is pain. But pain is really important. Because when we have pain, we know something is wrong. When we know something wrong, we will, we will try to find out what is it and what to do about it. We develop medicine. We develop art of healing. We develop hospitals. We do all of the things that we do is because we feel pain. If we didn't feel pain, we all happily die without discovering anything. Okay, <laughs> that would be it. We all we have big smiles on our face, faces, and in meanwhile we have pneumonia or we have appendicitis or we have broken legs or whatever it is that we are dying, but we are smiling stupidly. Okay, <laughs> you, know. <laughs> you know, that's that's what happens. But because we experience pain, because God has given the gift of pain we then use our capacity to know and knowledge and discovery and science and everything. And we develop then the whole things that we do. You see? And uh, another one is, for example, weakness is another suffering that comes upon human body. We become the older we become, the the weaker we become. What is weakness? Weakness is a sign of journey of life. We travel to you know when you tra- you are traveling. After a while, you get weak, you know. But traveling is really fantastic because when you go on a journey, you learn so much that otherwise you wouldn't, you see. Otherwise you wouldn't. And, of course, there are other physical sufferings. Uh, deformity is one of them, okay? The disadvantage in a physical term and so forth. 
Now, psychological suffering, again, is, is a, there is a wisdom in psychological suffering. Some of, what are some of the most important emotional, for example, um, areas that people suffer from? Well, okay. one is fear. Another one is anger. Another one is sadness and depression. Uh, anxiety, shame, rejection. These are all psychological, emotional areas of suffering. Okay? And they also have a purpose in that. Okay? If you just I give you an example, one example, so you see how it is. The, the most fundamental emotional experience in human being is love. Okay. Both the capacity to love and also to receive love. Okay. Love is central to human experience and to being human. If a person doesn't love, that person is not a full, complete human. Okay. Now, whenever there is a deficiency in our love relationships, we experience sadness, we experience rejection, we experience fear, we experience anger, resentment, all of those things. Whenever we are in good state of love relationship, we experience joy, we experience certitude, we have courage, we can do anything, we can take over the world because we are loved, you see. So, most human emotions are indicators of our state of love, of how we are loving and whether they, what we are loving is something that we should love. You know, not everything is uh, worthy of love. For example, people who love war. Just imagine, you know. Imagine if you were the person who loved war or loved violence or loved injustice or, you know, that kind of thing. So not everything is worthy of human love. The object of your love determines the nature of your love, the quality of your love. We will come back to this issue later. But... In the social respect, suffering, we have enormous amount of suffering socially also. And they all revolve around the issue of relationships. Social suffering are connected to relationships. Such as, you know, just think of things that happens with respect to relationships aside from issue of love that we talked already Injustice, for example, right? So many of humanity are suffering from injustice. Injustice is an expression of faulty human relationships or poverty. The way that the extremes of wealth and poverty are created in the world and masses of humanity <clears throat> suffer as a result or prejudice. Just mm -hmm. think of prejudice and how much suffering it brings to humanity. The minorities of the world, women throughout history, the minorities throughout history. Just think. Think what has happened to the First Nations. Think what has happened to the Africans. Think, think of the suffering of religious minorities around the world. Just think about it. 
and of course back home, freedom. You know, and I come back to the issue of freedom later. And of course, violence. Think of all people around the world who are victims of violence of all kinds. Violence in the family, violence in the society, violence in the schools, bullying, violence in the form of war. Just, just think of, you know, this everywhere. These are all areas of human suffering. And when it comes to spiritual suffering, uh, it refers to the dynamics of the spiritual transformation. Okay. And I think the, some of the most fundamental aspects of suffering in a spiritual sense or with respect to the whole issue of mortality and immortality. Mm -hmm. See, when people believe that this life is transient and at the end we become nothing, This is the greatest spiritual suffering. Because if, if life ends and it ends into nothingness, then what's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of doing, you know, living in this life? This life is full of suffering anyway. And then at the end, there's nothing. <laughs> no, that's a real bummer, okay? <laughs> this is not good, you know. You know, this is, this is not fair, okay? Abdul Baha says, the cause of all calamities is fear of annihilation. Fear of becoming, fear of becoming nothing. Annihilation. Fear of becoming nothing. This is the cause of all calamities. In other words, when a person decides that, that this life is transient and ends into nothingness, then anything goes. Anything goes. You can do anything because then there is no uh, reason, really, not to. Okay. So these are the categories of suffering that we all experience. And as I talk, we all realize that we have gone through this. Okay. Now, now, we have to ask ourselves, what, what are the roots of suffering? Where suffering comes from? Okay. And we can identify at least three categories of suffering. Self-induced suffering. Suffering that we bring about on ourselves. Others-induced suffering. Suffering that other people bring to us or we bring to other people. Okay? And then unintended accidental suffering like natural events, earthquakes and those kind of things. Okay? So there are three categories of suffering. Now, self-induced suffering all of us are familiar with it. In a physical sense, we can bring suffering upon ourselves if we don't take care of our physical body. In a psychological sense, we bring suffering to us, to ourselves by being greedy, by being envious, by having hatred, by having violence and conflict, 
by lying, by rejecting people. These are all areas of psychological suffering that we cause, you know, and uh, ourselves because our we do it to you know to ourselves. Uh, when we reject somebody, not only that person suffers, we also suffer. This is uh, it's impossible to avoid that. And then, you know, in human relationships, we uh, can uh, uh, also experience this suffering in the in area of backbiting, for example, or lying or dishonesty. You know, uh, when I was practicing psychiatry, uh, I observed that majority of marital problems that people had was because of lying and dishonesty. Uh, couples were not honest with each other. They were lying with each other. They, they would say, love, I love you, and they didn't mean it. They, you know, there, there were areas that, uh, and of course, in marriages, many marriages, there is conflict, uh, there is uh, violence, there is inequality, you know, there are all aspects of it. And uh, also, in a spiritual sense, if we live aimless lives, if we, la- we, live, we live a life that is self-centered, if we are selfish, if we have an unproductive life, then we create enormous degree of suffering for ourselves because there is nothing more really problematic when I, if I realize that I have lived my life in a fruitless, meaningless way and have therefore uh, totally wasted it. Waste of life. And there are so many lives that in this world are wasted. So many lives are wasted. Uh, Others induce suffering. Suffering that other people do to us are a number of kinds. You know, for example, violence, of course, at the top of it. Rejection, backbiting again, calumny. Calumny means uh, defamation of other people. These are all people tell lies about you. People accuse you of things that are not true. People uh, say things about you that are mean and unkind. Uh, People can take away your freedom. People can be prejudiced towards you, can make fun of you. You know, all kind of things that we experience in life. These are all, they are suffering that happened to us from other people doing what they do to us. And of course, the third category of suffering is not in our control. When accidents in life happens, disease comes, earthquake comes, uh, somebody hits, hits you, by cause, you know, all kind of things that happens. So all of these sufferings, all of these are there. And you cannot avoid it. So we have to ask ourselves what are the most 
causes of suffering that we must avoid at all costs. Because there are so many suffering in this world and so much of it is not in our control. The only thing that is in our control is what we do. Right? <coughs> now, I try to search an answer for this uh, to see whether I can find something in the Baha'i writings about uh, what is it that we absolutely should avoid? Okay? Not causing suffering to other people and not causing suffering to ourselves. And I came across this statement of Baha'u'llah in his most holy book. It's uh, the most holy book of the Baha'i faith. Okay. Uh, in this book, Baha'u'llah says, ye have been forbidden to commit murder or adultery or to engage in backbiting or calumny. Calumny means defaming people. Now, why these four things have been put together? Just think about it. Backbiting is one of them. Murder is another thing. That's a huge distance, you know. Backbiting, many times we sit around and say, have you heard? You know, <laughs> so and so, you know, uh, I didn't like the shape of, you know, the color of uh, his hair or her hair or something like that. Or worse, we say, you know, it's nice to sit and talk about other people, you know, and backbite. You know, our newspapers have uh, columns, you know, for backbiting, you know. <laughs> you know, the, the, the television and news and so forth are all, all filled with backbiting. You know, it is one of the pastimes of our time. We sit around and watch and laugh at suffering of other people and the fact that they make fool of themselves and so forth. And here is Baha'u'llah saying that four things are forbidden. Okay? Murder, adultery, backbiting, calumny. Why? Murder means killing another human being. Adultery means killing a marriage. Backbiting means backstabbing somebody. It's an act of killing. And calumny means character assassination. All of them are acts of destruction. Destruction of another human being, either physically or destruction of their institution of marriage or destruction of their or at all understanding of their personality when we are backbite we are destroying the good impression that we have of the other person or when defaming people we are character assassination they are all acts of fundamental destruction and Baha'u'llah says, this is forbidden. Because these conditions create the greatest suffering to people. Just imagine, just reflect on the times that you have suffered the most. Thank God we haven't been murdered, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but other areas may have affected us, okay? Yeah. The other areas may have it. May, we may have been subject of backbiting. We may have been subject 
of calumny and defamation. We may have been, we may have heard that somebody has been telling unkind things about us or doing unkind things towards us in our behind, behind our back. And you suffer profoundly because of that. That's a profound degree of suffering. So, so it's not surprising that uh, we find these statements in the writings of the Baha'i faith about uh, suffering. Then I ask myself a question, okay, how we overcome suffering? What are we going to do, you know? Because suffering is there. Baha'u'llah says, Hasten towards calamity. Don't run away from it. Because if you go towards it and you understand it, and if you develop a greater degree of wisdom about suffering, then you are on your path to eternal life, to become eternal spirit to become eternal light, meaning the, the other realms of existence beyond this realm of existence. So the question is, how do we do it? Okay. So came across a statement of Abdul Baha, which gives very clear direction on how to deal with suffering. Okay. I have divided what Abdul Baha says, categorized it, and there are three areas. One, Abdul Baha says, do not cause suffering to others and to yourself. That's one thing. Second, learn from suffering. And third, develop a special quality that is required for suffering, meaning be patient. Okay. In suffering, you need patience. If you are impatient, you are going to suffer more. And I know that because I'm an impatient person. Okay. <laughs> I know. And I know how much I have paid in life for being impatient. Okay. In one of his uh, tablets, Baha'u'llah says, God loves those who are patient. Okay. So, it's... so the first category of not causing suffering to ourselves or to other people. That's the most important way. Because this is in our control. We cannot do anything about other people. The only thing that we have control over is ourselves. Okay? And therefore it's not surprising that this short tablet of Abdul Baha 80, more than 80 percent of his statements that he made was about what we should do. And you all are familiar with it, but I just read it for our own. The first thing he says, be no cause of grief to anyone. Very simple. Okay. Be kind to all people. And love them with pure spirit. Okay. Be as kin, as kind as ever you can be. Be silent concerning the faults of other people. Okay? Be silent. Look always at the good 
and not at the back. Do all our deeds in kindness. He repeats this over and over and over of how important it is to learn to be kind. Because most people don't know how to be kind. Cut our hearts from ourselves, meaning not to be selfish. Be humble. Be as one. Be as one soul in many bodies. For the more we love each other, what happens? The more we love each other, the nearer we shall be to God. If you want to be close to God, you have to love each other. Act with courteousness and wisdom. Be truthful, be hospitable, and be reverent, meaning be cause of a healing for every sick person and it goes on all the statements about how we have to become agents of kindness of love and of unity as we do that, we decrease our suffering and we are not the cause of suffering of other people. Abdul Baha also says, should calamity exist to the greatest degree, rejoice. For these things are the gifts and favors of God. Now this is important. I was reflecting on it and I realized that the most important positive decisions that I have made in my life have been after a major calamity. Major calamity. I realized that whenever I did not respond to a calamity with an eye of understanding, didn't try to understand why this calamity has happened, I have lost an opportunity. But whenever a calamity happened and I allowed myself to reflect on it, to see what was my role in it, to understand what was the cause of it, to search for my own hidden capacities to deal with a calamity, I learned more about myself. I was able to, to change the direction of life and the outcome was positive. Anytime I didn't do that, the outcome was negative. You see? And that, it has happened over and over and over. In, with respect to many issues that I have found the greatest school of learning is when we experience calamity. When we, when we experience what? Calamity. When we experience suffering. When we experience suffering, that is the time to learn about ourselves. 
and about life and about dynamics of human life. That is, that is where we really go deep into the causes and dynamics of human existence. And therefore, is a source of rejoicing. Because, and this would go to the beginning statement that I read about from Baha'u'llah. It says, my calamity is my providence, is, my, is God's gift and care to us. Because it is a light that shows the way towards uh, a process that detaches you from the physical transient aspects of life and focuses you on the most important and lasting and eternal realities of life. This is the whole dynamics of detachment from the world. You know, living in the world doing the best that you can do in this world, contributing to this world, but at the same time being detached from it. Knowing that we are on a journey of eternity and therefore the, 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 what we do here is the process of learning ever greater degree of self-knowledge, of understanding of the dynamics of life, of expanding of our consciousness, of our, our awareness, of becoming universal people. You see, a, a universal person is the opposite of a prejudiced person. A prejudiced person's universe is very small. He says, this is my world, and all others are outside of it. A universal person, everybody is in his or her book, you see. So this is the process of learning from calamities, learning from suffering, things about ourselves that we never knew that we had, capa discovering capacities that we didn't have learning new things that we otherwise wouldn't have done, and becoming sensitive to the suffering of other people. If I become poor, then I will become much more sensitive about poor people in the world. If I'm hungry, then I would learn how other people feel when they are hungry. If I have in my family a child that is afflicted, then I would know how much suffering other people are doing in the world and so forth. So it makes you profoundly sensitive to other people and makes you universal in the process, makes you connected to the whole world rather than separated to the, from the world. It's a process uh, of that, that helps to spiritualize, if you wish, okay? And in order to do that, we need patience. Why we need patience? Because this is the process of transformation. And the process of transformation always is a slow process, is a systematic process, is the way that a worm becomes a butterfly. Okay? It's a process that takes place. And you just can't do it like that. You have to be willing to go through the stages of development. And this requires not only discipline of self, but also being patient with the process. Now, when you put all of these two things together, it seems to me that Baha'u'llah is calling us to become saints. Exactly. Isn't it? That's too much. No, it's not. <laughs> Becoming, 
He calls upon us to become saints. It doesn't mean that we are saints. It oh. means it means that we are trying to acquire saintly qualities. And it's very interesting. One young person wrote to Shoghi Effendi, the guardian of the Baha'i faith, asking what he should do in this world. And the guardian of the Baha'i faith wrote back to him and said that the world of humanity is in great crisis. And it needs a new generation of the people who are heroes, okay, martyrs, saints, and administrators. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The world of humanity needs those four categories of people. Martyrs. Heroes. Heroes. Martyrs. Saints. And administrators. administrators. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a very interesting dynamic. Because these are the things that we don't have in this world. Right now, if you think about our world of humanity, <laughs> can you find a hero? Batman. Is there... Ba <laughs> Batman is... Yes. Batman. <laughs> Superman, Batman. Wonder Woman. Wonder Man. Wonder yes. you know, those kind of characters become our heroes. Yeah. Okay? Is there anybody... Who is living, who is willing to sacrifice himself for the better cause of all humanity? All humanity, not for your cause, for all humanity. Are there any saints in this world? You see, the world has lost its holiness. We don't have the qualities of holiness in this world anymore. And that's why it is so difficult to administer this world. You cannot administer, you know, the election taking place in the United States and you see what's happening, you know. It's amazing. That, and that's happening all over the world because there are you no, know, you see the whole world of humanity has risen against their administrators. Right? Mm -hmm. Governments don't trust their people. People don't trust the government. Workers don't trust the owners of the companies and vice versa. So nobody trusts nobody. It's, it's just the one of those conditions that we don't have true leaders for our world of humanity. So these are the conditions that bring about ever greater suffering to the world of humanity. And in order to decrease the suffering of humanity, we as individuals then have to transform. We have to become heroes and martyrs and saints and new type of administrators. Well, we, uh, you know, I'm too old, he's gone. Younger people, okay? <laughs> okay, the younger people. Well, older people, we are finished, but anyway. <laughs> you know. Yeah. What about things like the Red Cross, though? I yeah. I was watching the Haiti today and, or last night, and some of these people that go there. They're selfless. Absolutely. They're Absolutely. Like a drop in the haystack. If but we, it's yeah. very touching to watch them. It is marvelous to watch them. And if we didn't have these small examples of people who are willing to sacrifice themselves for the good of humanity, this world would be in far worse situation than it is right now. Okay? Yeah. We have, we Some have, heroes. There, there are, we have yeah. heroes, we have martyrs, we have saints. Yeah. 
but but there are exceptions rather than the rule we all have to go into that path we all we all have to understand that the in order to decrease the suffering of humanity we have to go through this spiritual transformation which would decrease our own suffering and would decrease suffering of humanity you see that's what we have to do and so these were some reflections that i had as i began to think about uh the whole issue of suffering and and there is one of the hidden words that is very interesting bahaula says o son of being if thine heart be set upon this eternal imperishable dominion and this ancient everlasting life forsake this mortal and fleeting sovereignty okay this is the whole issue of detachment and attachment okay that doesn't mean not to be active agent in the arena of life it means that we have to become more and more universal and less and less self centered that's the process of spiritual transformation and establishing unity and love with all humanity anyway these are some thoughts that i had 